Oh, come right in. Oh, George, we've got company, and they're all in uniform. This is Bill Goodwin, inviting all you servicemen and women to enjoy another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our tenor Jimmy Cash, and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, it's morning in the Burns home, and Gracie has just returned from marketing. She's telling George of an exciting experience that occurred while shopping. Well, George, it's simply amazing. I never realized I was so popular. So, what happened? Well... Here I was in this big market, and a huge crowd of teenage fans kept following me and swarming all around me. No fooling. Yes, I was completely surrounded by autograph books. They pushed and milled around me, especially the girls. Hmm. I'll be done. Yeah, I was with a friend, and goodness only knows what he thought of that wild demonstration. <laughs> Who was your friend? Van Johnson. <laughs> He, uh, might have had something to do with it. What do you mean? Do the girls like that, Johnson? <laughs> like him? He makes the girl... <laughs> Gracie, he makes the girls gasp for breath worse than Frank Sinatra. Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> I tell you what, George, that's going some because Frank Sinatra really gasps for breath. <laughs> The view with Van Johnson at the market, couldn't you tell the girls liked him? Oh, goodness, no. They didn't li even like the clothes he was wearing. The girls didn't like his clothes? No, they tried to tear them right off his back. <laughs> Gracie, don't be silly. The girls are crazy about Van. He's a good-looking guy. He is handsome, isn't he? Hmm. You, um, you know, George, while we were shopping, Van Johnson turned toward me, and he reminded me of you. <laughs> Really? Yeah. He said, how's George? <laughs> I, uh, I see. Um, George, there's something I ought to tell you. Um, I, I hope you won't be too upset. What's that? Um, Van Johnson carried my groceries for me. So what? <laughs> You're pretty jealous, huh? Of course not. <laughs> I bet you'll never let me go to the market alone again, huh? Why shouldn't I? Well, George, when someone meets someone who's irresistibly attractive and popular and talented, it's pretty hard not to fall. And Van Johnson's only human, you know. <laughs> Gracie, don't be silly. Nobody's gonna fall for you, especially not Van Johnson. You're a settled-down married woman. Van Johnson's type is the young Bobby Sock girl. You know, uh, uh... A hep cat. Give me again, Jake. <laughs> huh? Oh, you solid Jackson. You're in the grave. <laughs> Gracie, don't try to make me think that you're one of those jitterbugs because you're not. Root? Uh, no. Toot? Root? Toot? Root, root? Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> You're past that stage. You're a housewife, a matron. Not what Van Johnson is looking for. Oh, excuse me, folks. I just wanted to ask if Mr. Burns will be home for lunch. No, I'll be at the office, Mrs. Regan. I'm going up to get dressed. Now. Oh, Mrs. Regan, I'm so mad. I told George that I'd met Van Johnson at the market, and he wasn't even worried. Has he got anything to worry about? Well, of course not. I wouldn't pay George for 16, Van Johnson. <laughs> Are you sure you feel all right, Mrs. Burns? <laughs> that Van Johnson is quite a hunk of boy. Oh, poor. George was a hunk when Van was still a boy. <laughs> but, Mrs. Reagan, that's not the point. I would like George to worry, even though there's nothing to worry about. Oh, I see. The idea of him saying I'm too old to be hep. Now, if I were your age, I could understand it. Oh, will you, uh... See who's at the door, Mrs. Reagan. I, I want to run up and check. Of course. So, I'm too old to be het, am I? <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Well, good morning, Miss Reagan. How are you? Solid, Jackson, solid. <laughs> huh? Ankle in, and I'll put on a Tommy Dawson record and we'll cut a blanket. 
Mrs. Regan, what's come over you? I'm in the groove, me coffee place. Van Johnson carried my groceries. Would that worry you? No. It wouldn't? No, I, I'd be so worried about being George that nothing else would bother me. <laughs> oh. You men just don't understand women's feelings about these things. Now, I wouldn't look at another man, and I wouldn't want another man to look at me. But I, I don't want George to know that. Oh, I see. I want him to worry about men chasing me just like I worry about women chasing... Uh, well, anyway, I want him to worry. I wondered how you'd get out of that. <laughs> Bill, I've got a darn good notion to stage a love scene with Van Johnson just so George won't take me for granted. Really? Well, you mean have, have Van hug and kiss you in front of George? Yeah. To teach George a lesson, I'd make that sacrifice. <laughs> That's some sacrifice. Say, Grace, aren't you afraid that you might actually fall for Van? Fall for Van Johnson when I've got George Byrne? Oh, oh, Bill. Does the eagle's mate fall for the sparrow? Does the lioness fall for a tabby cat? Does the moose's mate chase a mouse? Does the great dame's wife chase a mouse? Cash, our popular young tenor, sings a hit of several years ago, which is again popular. Don't blame me, Jim. Don't blame me for falling in love with you. I'm under your spell, but how can I help it? Don't blame me. Can't you? things you do If I can't conceal the thrill that I'm feeling Don't blame me I can't help it if that dog on moon above makes me need someone like you to love Blame your kiss as sweet as a kiss And blame all your charms that melt in my arms. 
That's like raising the flame in the oven after your goose is cooked. <laughs> well, I've got to show George that he can't take me for granted. Husbands forget that wives still like to be whistled at. Uh, and not once since we've been married has George whistled at me. I thought you were going to use Van Johnson to make your husband sit up and take notice. Well, Van Johnson is only a last resort. Resort? What a spot for a two-week vacation. <laughs> Here comes George now. Just watch me work on him. Well, I'm going to the office, dear. Oh, why don't you stick around, you big, gorgeous heap of muscle? <laughs> huh? You don't want to leave your ever-loving little mama. Come on, big boy. Kiss me. Kiss you? Certainly. Just stand where you are. I can pucker up and reach you from here. <laughs> Tracy, is there something wrong with you? I haven't had any complaints yet, big boy. <laughs> Kiss me. Tracy. I'm captivating. You're what? Captivating. Oh, what do you say you and I cat? Tracy, would you like a doctor? One at a time, big boy. I'm not through with you yet. <laughs> Look, this has gone far enough. Oh, seems to me we haven't even started. Me, big boy. Oh, stop. I'm going down to the office. I'll see you later. Well, Mrs. Burns, your little scheme didn't work. No, it didn't. Well, I guess there's only one way to convince him I'm fascinating, and that's to get Van Johnson over here to make love to me. But, uh, what if Van Johnson makes love to you and it doesn't convince your husband? Then it'll be just a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Goodbye, Mrs. Reagan. <laughs> Oh, hi, 
Hi, Gracie. <laughs> Won't you come in? Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, Van, uh, would you do me a favor? Would you come over to my house and make love to me for about ten minutes? Make love to you? <laughs> Some favor, huh? <laughs> I don't think I quite know what you mean with this making love. Oh, oh, I should have realized that you're terribly young and inexperienced. I am? Yeah, I guess... I guess you still belong to that period where you and your girl sip a soda with the same straw. Oh, no, no. no that's awfully insanitary. Oh, no. Come on, Van. I just want you to make love to me in front of George. I want him to find out something. Gee, hasn't his father ever had a talk with him? Uh, what? He could come over here next week. That's when my dad's having a talk with me. Oh, come on, Van. All I want you to do is make love to me in front of my husband to impress him. Oh, Gracie, you're talking silly. Why, if I did that, George would tear me apart. He'd pick me up in his two hands and break me in two. <laughs> Now you've got me talking silly. Well, won't you change your mind, Van? Oh, I'm sorry, Gracie. I just can't do it. Besides, I'm very busy right now. I'm trying to get the lead in the new Greer Garson picture, and I'm up against some pretty stiff competition. Really? Yeah, the deciding factor will be how we play the love scene. Oh, I see. It's between Walter Pigeon and me. Well, wouldn't it be a better love scene if you did it with Greer Garson? <laughs> Don't joke. This picture means a lot to me. At the studio, they think I'm too young. Oh, Gracie, you have no idea the disadvantages of being my age. Well, I'll just have to wait and find out. <laughs> Gee, I'd give anything to give this part opposite Greer Garson. I'll go and get the script, script and show it to you. You wait right here. Oh, all right. Oh, dear, it's humiliating. He refuses to make love to me. All right, Mr. Johnson, I'll just stop using your wax. <laughs> Hello? Hello, yes. Yes, this is Van Johnson's house. MGM calling? Uh, tell him what? You're giving the part to Walter Pigeon? I see. Uh, would you call back in about a minute and tell that to Mr. Johnson? Thank you. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, I can use this to get Van to play the love scene with me. Oh, Gracie, you wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, but Gracie, that's dishonest. So what? Okay, then do it. All right, I will. <laughs> Gee, I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> Here's the script, Gracie. Now that I look it over, I'm a cinch for the part. You think so, huh? Yeah. I'll make that pigeon look like a dead duck. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, then I, I hate to tell you this, but you're not going to get the part. What? Not unless you convince my husband, George, that you can play a love scene. What has George got to do with it? Oh, only runs MGM, that's all. Runs MGM? Runs Metro George Mayer. I thought Mr. Mayer ran it. Ha! George was there when Mayer was just an alderman. <laughs> Why, George owns 79% of the stock. Gracie, you wouldn't pull my leg, would you? I will if you let me play the love scene with you. <laughs> it's the only way you'll get that part in the picture. Oh, don't be silly. I've got that part sewed up. Uh, don't look now, but your seam's ripping. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Van. Oh, oh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'm staying at attention. <laughs> what? You're giving the part to Walter Pigeon? Well, what am I going to do? But I'm too big to play Andy Hardy. <laughs> yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Oh, well, you see, Van, I tried to tell you. Gee, you knew this before I did. George must be the big shot at MGM. Well, of course. Do you think I'd lie to you? Oh, no, no. Uh, you are young, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but there's one thing that puzzles me. If George is such a big shot... Why don't I ever see him at the studio? He's the power behind the scenes. That's the way it is with all big business. When you walk into the Santa Fe station, do you see Santa? <laughs> Why, you're, you're lucky if you see his daughter, Faye. Well, if George can give me the part, I'll come over and audition the love scene for him. Oh, good. Be, uh, be there at 6 o'clock. 
Meanwhile, give me the script so I can study Greer Dawson's part. All right, here. We'll do the love scene on pages 34 and 35. Good. Gee, Gracie, you haven't got long to learn this scene. What if you forget a line? Oh, don't worry. If I forget a line, I'll just look at you and pant. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, Gracie, how do you want me to play this love scene? Like a sophisticated lover? A caveman? Or a soldier on an eight-hour pass? Oh, I'll take one of each. See you later, Dad. <laughs> Felix Mills in his orchestra. A new hit, I'm Making Believe. He's just a silly, headstrong boy with a 20-20 vision. Gracie, are you still trying to make me believe that you're one of the jitterbug crowd and that Van Johnson is mad about you? He's blown his top jack. We're a gruesome twosome. I'm his little beat-up bundle bunny in a dream drape. We're a thing. Now, look. And believe me, Donald O'Connor is jealous. All right, all right. Oh, there's Van Johnson now. Come in. Hi, folks. Oh, Bill, I thought you were Van Johnson. Well, it's a common mistake, Gracie. Girls simply can't tell us apart. <laughs> oh, brother. Why, sometimes a girl gets so confused that the only way she can decide which is Van Johnson is for both Van and me to kiss her. Well, the kid loses more dates that way. <laughs> you, you, you mean the girls take you instead of Van? Well, Nash, Nash. They know they're in for a gay evening. Has Van Johnson got anything like that to offer? No, that icky. Well, here comes that icky up the walk right now. I'd better go powder my nose. Well, I'll be done. Gracie said that Van Johnson was coming to see her, but I didn't believe it. Listen, George, get wise to yourself. Gracie and Van are going to put on a love scene to make you jealous. Huh? <laughs> you poor guy. You know, every week you take it on the chins. <laughs> So they're going to make me jealous, huh? They want to worry me, huh? Well, I'll show them. Come in. Hello, Mr. Burns. Hello, Van. Well, hello, Sudsy. So long, Icky. <laughs> oh, Gracie, Van Johnson is here. Make yourself comfortable, Van. Hello, Gracie. Oh, you boy, you mad, impetuous boy. Oh, you followed me here into the very home of my aged husband. <laughs> oh, shall we start right into the scene? Oh, George is busy. What care I for your aged husband? Come to my arms, my darling. Let me crush you in a mad embrace. Ah, l'amour. Toujours l'amour. 
Skip that part. George doesn't understand Russian. <laughs> what? Next line. Oh, precious one. You're the most beautiful, most desirable creature in the world. I'm mad for you. Mad! Come on. <laughs> Sit on my lap. That's, uh, that's a nice suit you're wearing, Van. What did you say, Mr. Burns? I say you're wearing a nice suit. Well, George, I'm sitting on his lap. Well, if you wrinkle it, I'll have Mrs. Regan press it. <laughs> Gracie, I think I'm flopping. I'll be pretending just to keep your salary down. Oh, I see. Dearest, my love for you is a flame that consumes me. My whole being is a fire. I'm panting. Breathless. <laughs> There's a little stuffy in here. I think I'll go to the next room and get some air. Oh, Gracie, he thinks I stink. Yeah. Well, I guess you better leave the romantic roles for Sinatra. Well, I want that part. If he's such a big stockholder at MGM, why did he give me such a bush off? Uh, why? Yes, why? Uh, well, um, he wants the part for himself. George? Can't play pigeon's part. Oh, I don't know. He's got the toes for it. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Mr. Burns. Yes. I. I wasn't very convincing in there, was I? No. Well, believe me, what I did was sincere. It came from my heart. You mean you were serious? Never more serious in my life. Why don't you stop being selfish and give me a chance? <laughs> huh? I'll get it in spite of you. Now, wait a minute. You can't stop me just because you own 79%. 79%? Uh, Who owns the other 21? Those incorporated. Now, listen. Mr. Burns, there are some things a man your age just can't do. <laughs> See here. The part in that picture is mine. Picture? What picture? The picture I just auditioned for. Gracie said you'd give me the part. Oh, so that's what Gracie dreamed up to get you over here. <laughs> You've been had, son. You, you mean you're not the brains of MGM? I could be, but they never asked me. <laughs> Mr. Burns, you really ought to do something about that wife of yours. It's no use. I've tried. <laughs> Well, I'll have a try at it myself. I'm going in there and scare the, the nail polish off her. <laughs> Gracie, I've had enough of this play acting. You've let me on, and now you'll have to pay. Oh, but George isn't... Fooey on, George. It's you I want. Oh, but Come George... to my arm. And George isn't... Fooey on, George. Oh, why don't you fooey on somebody your size? <laughs> oh, I'm mad about you. Mad, do you hear? I'll smother you with kisses and never let you go. Come here. Oh, no, no, Van. I love my husband. Come here. Oh, please, please. George! What is it? Uh, watch this kid. You can learn something. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.